This is more like it. Definitely. Days like this sort of make up for the chaos from last week. Or the or the cleaning or the grinding, the endless wire brushing. Yeah, it's all starting to come together now. When you throw, when you get a load of paint on your on your keel, it starts to feel like you're making progress, you know. Okay, you're going in. Hope I don't drop you. Oh my God. It is completely flooded. Look at that down there. That is ridiculous. I'm gonna to have to pump that out. Charles, this is what I was hoping it would be like, like all the time. I know it's not possible, but you know. Nice bit of music in the background playing. Nice cup of coffee. Oh, that's not the end of it. Nice bit of painting. Oh, hell is it? Oh, my God. Old leaky tub. Oh, the hell is it? I don't know if I'm going to put in one of the pants. Oh. I'm not gonna be sick in this mess. Just an just an easy going, light-hearted adventure, you know, making some hilarious mistakes along the way. <laughs> Nothing too serious. Nothing too intense, you know. I don't want to jinx it, but I think today is going to be a good day. Yeah, so the uh, the paint on the keel has has been going pretty well actually today. Um, like I said, it's been pretty laid back. I've, um, what I've done is I've painted not just the, the steel but also the wood immediately above it and I know what you're probably thinking, you're probably thinking he's an idiot, he hasn't sanded down the wood before he's painted it well what I've done is I've sanded down the first couple of inches or so along this line here, around here um, that's because at some point I am going to be completely sanding uh, this whole, well the entire hull um, so at least this gives me a bit of depth to sand down to um, when I do the rest of the hull. At least that's my theory. I'm sure I'm wrong somehow. <laughs> I've been wrong with most things up to now. Um, the second job I want to get done today is just to remove these anodes here. Because um, these are essentially going to be in the way. There's one here, another one up there, same on the other side. Um, I need to take these off. That way I can see what's behind them, make sure it's all still in good condition before I fully sand uh, and grind down the rest of this whole area. Um, and then that way I can just continue on with the chute uh, and to make sure that I just stabilize this, make sure there's, there's no further corrosion on it. Pretty simple really. Anodes are installed on many vessels, both big and small, that are at risk of an electrochemical process called galvanic corrosion. Dowager is one such vessel, but what exactly is galvanic corrosion? Well, in engineering I've seen galvanic corrosion most often when two different metals are pressed together, either by rivets or bolts. In the presence of water such as rain, one of these metals will corrode faster than if it was by itself. Preventing galvanic corrosion can become a major engineering challenge, and over time, it can even result in structural failure. 
Yet, unlike this example, many of Dowager's metal fittings below the waterline aren't physically connected to one another, but they're still just as vulnerable. This is because when submerged, the water acts as an electrical conductor, allowing a small potential difference to pass between these different metals on the hull, and typically eating one of them away. It's as though the metals are connected directly to one another, allowing corrosion to take place. That's where the anodes come in. Commonly made of aluminium or zinc, when attached directly to metal fittings, such as the keel and propeller shafts, these sacrificial lumps of metal will react more readily than the components they are attached to. This means that instead of the important metals on a boat dissolving to nothing, it's the anodes that will waste away instead. Once an anode is exhausted, the metal component it was designed to protect will in turn begin to corrode. If anodes are not maintained, serious damage will occur. Yet, after more than 90 years, it's a testament to Dowager's previous owners that the vast majority of her underwater fittings are in really good condition. Anodes are designed to corrode, so whatever you do, don't paint over it uh, like someone has done in the past here. Uh, you can see the line of it here, um, because if you paint over it, it covers it up and essentially it can't work anymore. <coughs> but with every brass screw fixed in a bed of epoxy, anode removal proved a much harder <laughs> task than I'd anticipated. The epoxy's gonna win, I think. Come on. Tell you what, never am I ever putting my own anodes on with a flathead. Why use a flathead for something like this? I don't I don't get it. No not a hope. They're completely seized. The only successful method for this is to stitch drill. Even a wrench can't get them off. Ah. Why put why use flat heads? I don't why why do that? I don't get it. Like what you would oh. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, don't have to drill these out. Where's that drill? Uh. Right, this is the technique I've picked up in the construction industry. Stitch drilling. Come on. Something I did actually worked. Oh, Jesus. Oh. You know what, I've decided uh, this one can stay after all. It's in great condition. <laughs> It's all sealed in uh, with epoxy. It's not going anywhere. I think the hull behind here is solid. But this one, that one up there, has got to go. And the same with the one on the other side at height. It looks like the two, the two that are uh, higher up on the boat are in a lot worse condition than the two lower down. The two lowers, lower down, are, uh, yeah, they're, they're much newer, you can tell even down to the brass screws 
and they're flatheads as well though. I just, just don't get why everything has to be so hard. But Every step. It's like uh, it's like trying to pull teeth. It's like, you know, just a simple thing is just take off an anode. It's like it should be easy. But it's all been soaked in epoxy. Uh, which is understandable. But uh, this this boat <laughs> it's not making anything easy at all. That's interesting. We've got what appears to be a fair bit of water ingress uh, from the inside. It could be that or oil. It could be oil. Like, oh, feels like oil. Just through the seams of the hull. If I get time, I'll have a look at that because I haven't had a proper look at the stern. So it'll be interesting to see what exactly what's going on inside here. Okay, the weather has turned absolutely filthy here. So I've had to stop my painting just because all the, all the dust, I don't know, all the dust uh, and everything was just getting blown around uh, too much and it was just gonna completely ruin the paint job. Um, so I thought I'd just come up here onto deck and just do a bit of housekeeping. Oh, what the hell's that in there? Um, that noise you can hear is just the tarpaulin and the wind. It is that bad. And I can just see a hole in the tarpaulin now. I'm gonna have to repair that. But <clears throat> one thing I realized I haven't done yet is I haven't checked the stern bulkhead which is right below me and I can access it through this little hatch here um, this is the first time I'm going to see it so armed with my little head torch and you we're going to take a look in for the first time and uh, we're going to see how bad it is under here I think it's going to be pretty flooded just based on some of the seepage we can see or have seen through the hull. Okay, here we go. Okay, you're going in. I hope I don't drop you. Oh my God. It is completely flooded. Look at that down there. That flood water has come right up. Oh my God. I can't see what. I can feel air on the face. In a way, that is seriously impressive. Look how high it is, that water level. Jesus Christ, it's just been sat there for years. That is ridiculous. I'm gonna to have to pump that out. Okay, so that tells me two things. Firstly, uh, we've got a big flooding issue. So that explains <clears throat> the softness of these deck panels. This is just plywood under my feet and it's just completely sunken. So all the rain has fallen through here over time and just found its way to the lowest point of the stern. But if I then come through here, I've got the engine bay in here pretty dry now. So I'm just gonna drop down. <sighs> so we've got, wow, I can really smell the oil, the oil down here. So we've got these, this uh, standing, I'm not gonna call it water, it's more oil, is the, uh, this is just the, the sump, the pan that's designed to uh, to hold that, any leakage from the engine. So that's completely separate, but I mean, I drained most of this the first week I had the boat. So it just goes to show that this bulkhead here, this bulkhead is seriously effective. 
because I was told that these Watson class lifeboats they had um, they had 15 watertight compartments, so that even if one, two, even three compartments were completely flooded, they would still be able to, to float and to operate. Even these engines were designed, or at least the original engines, I don't know about these, I'm guessing they are just based on where the air filter's located, but the engines were designed to run with the engine bay flooded. So even with all this flooded, it could still operate and still produce power which again is amazing. But you're talking over 90 year bulkheads here and it's holding the water. It's holding the water back between where I am now Jesus. Yeah, this wind isn't getting any better. But it's holding the water back from where I am now all the way through, as you can see there, to right below those uh, the, the 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 deck boards in the stern. That's amazing. I'm gonna fall over. Well, while I've got nothing else to do in terms of the outside of the boat, I may as well just pump out the stern, and that explains the little bit of seepage I'm seeing between between the uh, panelling in the hull. Um, but it's holding back all that water. There's loads of water in there. Yeah, I'm kind of worried. That is kind of worrying. Actually, Throwing the clear out, I actually found this garden pump here and I was wondering what it was doing on this boat. But now, I think I've got my answer. Uh, the smell coming in from down here is really bad. It's like really bad, rotten, stagnant pond water. The mask helps a little bit. So uh, and the goggles are just in case this thing decides to blow all that stagnant water all over me. It says ensure all fittings and seals are airtight. So, well, this is one hell of a test for it. Uh, I just don't want to get soaked in pilge for the second time on this project already. Within about two weeks. This is it. Let's just let's just see what's going to happen here. Fuck it. I've got everything crossed. Don't, don't blow up on me. Hold on. What's going on? I can hear something. What's that? Sound of a... Sound of a switch or... Holy shit. Why isn't it running? Come on, I'm making a noise. What's that do? I've got a horrible feeling. There's no oil. Oh Christ. I think it's completely dry. Yeah. Okay, no oil. They ran it until it just seized up. I'm guessing that's not it. I haven't got a clue what's in there. I'm going to have to do this the hard way. Oh, fucking hell, not again. Right, gonna find out what lies beneath. Oh, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, I 
Sick in this mask. blown up. Everything on this boat is either seized, missing, broken or flooded. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I think I can see the problem. It appears that the uh, suspected faecal matter that I sucked up as uh, as compacted in the uh, in the filter and that's caused the motor which is in here to essentially fail yeah I don't know why I'm wiping my face I need to wash my hands the other thing though is if I'm going to do this properly, I need to lift up these panels. So this panel here, this panel here, I'm going to have to unscrew all of these bolts, lift up the panels, then I can get a proper pump down there and pump the rest out. And then maybe even, I might even be able to get a heater. Um, and then, and then, Maybe gradually warm it, I don't know. But then the weather's changing, so it's getting warmer all the time, so I might just let the weather do its job. Uh, but yeah, this was a bit of a surprise today. But I need to, yeah, if I can, that's, oh shit, it's another flathead. Although these look much easier to lift up. Okay, another day in paradise. As for my paint job, well, it's not the best, but then it was never going to be, to be honest. Um, I've put, I've, well, I've managed to get to three layers of paint on the keel, um, so that's pretty good. So despite all the failures, I have actually achieved something, and the boat is in a better condition than when I got to it earlier this week. So, I mean, that looks pretty nice. It's pretty smooth under here, all things considered. Um, I've rolled it all on, and then just in those areas where, you know, we've got the rivets and um, and the seams and things like that, I've just used a brush uh, just to make sure I've got good coverage. But uh, yeah, I've added one layer at a time, 40 microns at a time. That's actually not too bad, to be fair. So this final coat here that I've managed to get in today is just going to dry off now and then I should be able to come back to it uh, beginning of next week. I spoke to a couple of boat owners earlier and I asked them what they do with their keels, particularly where, for example, you've got the blocks. So I can't get to the underside where the blocks are. And I asked them specifically, what do you do with that? Like, do you pay to get the boat lifted up or and then shuffle the blocks along or or what and they just basically said that they're pretty pragmatic about it they don't really worry too much about what's under the blocks the next time it's back out of the water let's say in a year's time they just make sure that the blocks are put down in a slightly different location just so they can get to it 
It's just a case of managing uh, the corrosion, just on a just on a regular basis, really. Um, and I, I've got to be a bit pragmatic about it. I'm not looking at perfection. That's not what I'm aiming for. Um, at this point in time, it's just like I said, it's just to stabilise things and make sure that you know we're making things better, not making them worse, and just getting getting the boat in a in a condition where it can go back in the water. Um, if I can do that, that's yeah, that'd be an achievement in and of itself. I found myself just wandering up and down the boat earlier on, uh, just looking at everything that needs doing, and I think size of this job is has just kind of hit me um, especially what with what I found in the stern here um, it's just everything I look at it's just <laughs> but the only way is up and I know a lot of people have said like just just do a runner and you should never have got it but I know it's, it's not it's not so much about the boat it's about the history of the boat yeah, that's worth saving, I think. To me, it is, anyway.